Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again stepping into the world of The Legend of Zelda. I've been playing a lot of Tears of the Kingdom in my spare time, and if you have as well, you know there are a lot of side quests in the game that you can go on, one of which is this weird little guy and his brother in a hot balloon ask you to go into caves and collect bubble frogs. In particular, they want you to kill them and they like spout out these little bubble gems. They kind of look like regular Zelda rupees, but instead have like cool little patterns on them. And what I'm gonna assume is antlers since the bubble frog also has them and the rabbit that hops away once you kill it does. I, I know I'm sounding like I'm on something, but it's in the game, okay? So what I thought I would do is try and make a bubble gem and make it light up. So that's what we're gonna build today. Today we're building a bubble gem from Tears of the Kingdom. Let's get to building. Free template in the description. Sorry about the wobbly camera. I tried a new screen capture program and recorded my process for getting a file ready for my laser cutter and it didn't record. So here is a brief summary. I found a reference image of the bubble gem, moved over to Microsoft Paint and removed the background, then colored it black. I took that file over to pixsvg.com. I'll put links to it down in the description and converted it to an SVG. It's a free online converter. An SVG is a scalable vector graphic which can be resized and rendered at any resolution which is perfect for a laser cutter. Then I took it over to my Glowforge, loaded it in, made copies, and cut it out on some eighth inch yellow tinted transparent acrylic. I went ahead and made a paper template version of it so I could share it with everybody. So you can make it even if you don't have a laser cutter. I only used it for the antlers. This could easily be made out of materials like cardboard or some other sturdy alternative. Based on my antler pieces, I am now trying to figure out the dimensions of the in-game model so I can scale it to at least be relatively close to the real one that I'm gonna make. You could also just print out the image to the scale that you want, but I like the challenge of figuring it out by hand. Once I have the shape down and cut out, I can then figure out the overlay pieces that will be in the front and the back of the gym. I measure it about three fourths of an inch from each side and cut that out. After I did that, then I decided what size foam I would use for each piece and if it needed straight or angle cuts. I also give each part names and mark it with other information that somebody would need to build it themselves.
For the top and bottom pieces, I'm going to use some 10 millimeter EVA foam. This will give me enough thickness to make a nice clean outward 45 degree cut and put a nice bevel on the gem to give it more dimension. You tilt the handle back so that the point of the blade is outside of the black edge and try to lock your wrist into place as you pull across the line in a nice even stroke. A sharp blade makes quick work of it and it limits the amount of sanding needed later. With lots of practice, you get really good at this. To give the antlers a little more dimension, I'm going to add a layer of UV resin to each side. This will make it puff out a little more and allow the light to catch the irregular angles when it is shining through. I make an even pass to the edges, then blast it with the UV light. Once cured, I make another pass, but this time just in the center of each branch or whatever you want to call it. You'll see it later when I go to attach them to the gem. Now I'm ready to assemble the gem body. You'll notice that there are two different thicknesses and types of foam. I'm using 10 millimeter foam in gray, which is the SKS HD foam. It's nice, relatively dense foam, great quality. Definitely suggest you, you use it. I use it for a lot of my builds. The black foam is four millimeter What The Foam from Cosplay Apprentice. It is extremely dense and will hold its shape and keep it rigid, which is nice for the edge that I'm gonna make this lid for. I realized that the average battery powered LED pack needs a little bit more space so I put a layer of 10 millimeter in between the two four millimeter layers. If I didn't want to light it up I could use different thicknesses and not hollow out the gem. I traced out where each part would lay on top of the other, put down some contact cement, and after it sat for a few minutes I tacked it together. The reason I left it separate was so that I could add magnets to the edges. This will allow me to open it and change out the batteries if I need to and conceal the inside without having a weird switch or button poking out the side or on the back. I'm using different magnets because the neodymium magnets are really, really strong. If I used it on both sides, they just pull each other out of the foam. So one side gets a strong one and the other side gets a smaller, weaker magnet. I marked out the area Area, drilled a hole in with the rotary tool and super glued them into place.
With my magnets in place and my sides sanded evenly, I am ready to make a cutout for the antler pieces, or whatever you want to call these weird protruding things. I traced out the shape of the bottom and cut out a wedge roughly the thickness of the antler. I also go ahead and cut a small channel on the inside that the LED will go into to illuminate the acrylic. The foam gets two coats of Plasti Dip. Then I spray painted in this tealish color with a little gradient mist of a lighter shade on top. If you look at the gym closely, it has these really cool patterns on it. So I'm mixing up a lime green and a light blue with a little bit of white to get the color that I want. With this acrylic paint, I make two passes on both sides and am done with the painting portion, just eyeballing what I can see and guessing on the rest. With everything done, the last step is to glue the lights in and the antlers. I hot glue the lights into place and tidy up the wires on the inside with more of the glue. I like to look for these battery powered LEDs on sale after Halloween and Christmas. You can get these for a couple of bucks and they really come in handy for someone who doesn't like to figure out the wiring and soldering mess. Lights always bring props to that next cool level. I am not sure if the hot glue will hold in the acrylic, so I may have to go back in with some five minute epoxy later to secure it better we'll just have to see but with that i'm finished hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you haven't tried tears of the kingdom you definitely should give it a go it's an awesome game with lots of cool stuff that i really want to build more of
and we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. It's definitely something that could be simplified. You don't have to use acrylic. You don't have to put batteries in it. You could just make this all out of foam or plastic or cardboard or whatever. Uh, I do like the option to be able to easily pull off the front face, turn on the light, which it's hard to see in the studio, and then plop it back on with magnets. Kind of makes it easy and relatively seamless. You can obviously see there's a, there's a little bit of a gap there, but it is what it is. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from a game that's in a side quest mission and from a really creepy guy, but you get really cool stuff if you collect all of them and yeah. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You give them one of these, tell them much props. Let's go see if we can find the rest of them. I need to get some arrows and a stronger bow. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.